Hi, this is Rajan Kotru from International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. We are based in Kathmandu, Nepal, and we are an intergovernmental body which works in eight countries, uh, right from Afghanistan uh, up to Myanmar. This, of course, includes countries like India, Pakistan, China, uh, Nepal, Bhutan, and Bangladesh. Our main agenda is mountain development. That means the uh, biodiversity in that landscape, but also the people who are dependent on this natural asset. Well, this is a very interesting area, Hindu Kush Himalayas, because we have world's four bio hotspots. We have 10 rivers originating from this area. And uh, we have 1.9 billion people who are dependent on the ecosystem services which come from this mountain yes. chain. These 1.9 billion, that is one quarter of mankind, after you know CBD and uh, and the Earth Summit discussions went on for almost 20 years, we said we should really work uh, with the agenda of ecosystem uh, management at a scale, and that's why we created a kind of a customized landscape approach for our region. And the landscape approach is not only about ecosystem services, but it's also the people who live in the landscape. You know that has to be really noticed. We created a program at our institution called Transmodern Landscapes because Hindu Kush Himalayas is also about borders and we have coined recently a nomenclature going from borders to bridging nations and bridging boundaries. You know, something uh, which is uh, at the heart of our work and that's um, on issues which are much more comfortable when we talk about say cultural services. For instance, bringing school children across the border for their mutual learning. For instance, also doing a good uh, mapping and inventory of uh, cultural and natural sites, and then using common map between few countries as a kind of uh, you know basis for organizing a responsible tourism package at transboundary level. Hindu Kush Himalaya is a data deficit area. We don't have much. Uh, you know, data on environment, uh, also glacier monitoring has started in a big way because we know that these are melting. And also a lot many other problems uh, between the ecosystem and the people, forest fires, human wildlife conflicts, uh, water sharing can be a conflict area. All these uh, issues are really uh, at the fundament of why we came for this Transmontary Landscapes program. Now, there are several programs there. We have almost four initiatives which work across the borders between uh, these eight countries. Uh, what we have done is that we have focused on um, five key things. Um, first is, you know, um, looking into the local livelihoods because people are important and therefore we uh, believe that uh, people's livelihoods are improved, they are value added then uh, we are actually addressing certain SDGs because mountain areas are much more poverty ridden than the plains of South Asia and, and, and the Himalayas. Second is of course the whole ecosystem management at a scale where uh, you mentioned these ecosystem services which come from the landscape. These need to be understood, harnessed and also sustainably managed. And therefore we have invested a lot of time and resources into understanding the ecosystem dynamics uh, and the whole plethora of services which come from the landscape um, of Hindu Kush Himalayas. Um, then uh, we have, uh, you know, all the countries in the Hindu Kush Himalaya have really um, committed to certain global um, conventions. Uh, I may mention CBD, uh, I may mention Paris Agreement, uh, of course the SDGs as well, all the all the, all the uh, governments have committed to SDGs, they have set targets and, and indicators. So therefore, it becomes a very, very interesting thing to really see. We should establish also certain areas where we try to document the traditional knowledge, uh, local knowledge and their local management system. Uh, we try to document them, understand them and see how we can also incentivize communities and people for not only harnessing these services, but also preserving these services, managing these services on a sustainable way. The fourth one is, again, very important because the Hindu Kush Himalaya, as per, as per the IPCC reports, is a data deficit area. Uh, we know that we don't have much data on climate, 
that would mean uh, you know precipitation, snow cover. So in the past decade, we have invested a lot of resources to really establish monitoring sites, uh, sample plots to really see how we can monitor in the longer version of our data deficit uh, issue to raise this data in the coming years. And the fifth is the crux. That is about transboundary cooperation. The climate doesn't know any boundaries. Environmental governance doesn't know any boundary. So therefore, we are saying we're working transboundary scale. That means between the countries, because the issues of, say, wildlife trafficking, issues of forest fire, issues of cultural disintegration, which is happening because some of, sometimes indigenous groups which are living on the border have a common culture, common language, uh, common cuisine, and we are losing their knowledge and we are losing their culture as well, which is full of wisdom, which we can use to counter, counter, uh, counter climate change uh, and also manage uh, our environmental governance issues. Um, learn from that wisdom because communities have their norms, their procedures, how they've been managing these ecosystems over the uh, hundreds of years and thousands of years. This transboundary cooperation can be in many ways. For instance, a common natural and cultural sites map. For instance, a common vegetation map on which we can then base a, uh, base a business plan for management of forests and management of wetlands uh, and management of agricultural lands. Uh, similarly, it brings the three countries or two countries together to talk in same language. When I say same language, I mean that we designed a scientific framework, scientific protocols, um, and uh, use that framework in this landscape across the Hindu Kush Himalaya in a similar way so that the data collected, collated, and analyzed uh, is using the same methodology. So that gives you a kind of a comparability uh, for the data which is raised. And that is a data which is also need to, <laughs> that is a data which you can then use to influence not only national and local policy influencing fora, but also global fora which are there. At the end of the day, we are working in three fields. We create evidence from the ground by um, developing a practice, by strengthening a local practice, and create a lot of evidence and use applied science. And based on that applied science and community knowledge, we uh, manage our landscapes, its data, and its future conservation and development um, ideas based on the stakeholder dialogue which we create uh, right in the beginning. And then third thing which we want to influence uh, is the policy at the national level. So that's where we then look into these policy influencing fora. We provide that evidence, and then try to see that the policies which are designed and, and, and created for future are much more inclusive. Uh, they are much more uh, climate uh, friendly or countering climate uh, actions, which we have uh, already designed what could be those uh, climate actions, but also um, giving a kind of environmental governance, which is good governance. That means we look into these problems, what I mentioned right in the beginning, uh, you know, for instance, human wildlife conflict and wildlife trafficking, all these issues are common to all these eight countries. So that is the essence of a landscape approach. Um, but while doing so, we use culture as a key entry point. Uh, that would mean the local practices, uh, local cuisine, for instance, in Tibet. We, we use uh, even um, uh, the folk wisdom, which is there, try to, uh, you know, um, document that folk wisdom. Uh, we have written nice books about that. One of them is Shared Landscapes. And this shows a connect between cultures right across eight countries. So that's a very softer way of bringing countries like India and China together, or bringing countries like uh, India and Nepal together to work on an agenda which is softer, but it's a win-win at the end of the day. So that is our Transmony Landscapes program at ECMOD, and we are definitely going to take it forward in the next decade uh, or so.